Mr. Speaker, I rise to sound the alarm about an ominous trend that seems to be taking hold in our nation. In June, a self-avowed Democrat socialist jumped into the national spotlight in her quest to join this body. Many view her as carrying the mantle for a new socialist trend among some in the United States. So I ask, what would, that socialist po what would socialist policies mean for our country's future? I've come to realize that a whole generation of Americans have grown up for whom the Soviet Union is just a distant historical memory. Many have no personal memory of when the Soviet Union came crashing down in 1991, which was dramatic proof that its socialist system was a dismal failure. Many can't recall the feeling of national pride over the fact that, in contrast, the free economy of the United States had succeeded in producing the highest standard of living in world history. So perhaps it's understandable that for a new generation, the old, empty promises of socialism seem to carry a new allure. Socialism, by definition, is the political and economic theory of social organization whereby production, distribution, and exchange should be owned and regulated by the community as a whole. In other words, what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. Usually it's the latter that get people to buy in. That is, what's yours is mine. This concept holds a strong appeal for many people because it addresses legitimate concerns over inequity and injustice. The problem is that, for all its high-minded fairness, socialism doesn't work. It's not just a castle in the air. It's the promise of a palace that is really built on quicksand. And you don't have to look back to the Soviet Union to see this. Venezuela is just the latest tragic example of socialism's devastation. At the beginning of the 21st century, Venezuela was one of the top 20 richest countries in the world. Today, its poverty rate is 87% and its inflation rate is predicted to be approaching one million percent. Yes, one million. Once Venezuela, its capital, was a tourist destination with thriving culture. Today, it's the crime capital of the world. This crisis is a result of the redistributive policies and the systematic destruction of economic freedom by a corrupt and elitist administration. As President Trump said in his first speech to the United Nations General Assembly, the problem in Venezuela is not that socialism has been poorly implemented, but that socialism has been faithfully implemented. It's a sobering reminder that while socialism's torchbearers may change, the havoc it wreaks with its hollow promises remains the same. What we must remember is that America is not immune. As President Ronald Reagan famously said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. Socialism, faithfully implemented, could cripple our nation's peace and prosperity over time, just as it did in Venezuela. It's easy to see the allure of socialism. Socialists say that they desire an uh, equitable distribution of wealth and then characterize capitalism as rampant greed and materialism. Ironically, it's typically the advocates of socialism who display the excess desire for material goods. Theirs is the obsession with making things free, from phones to Internet access to a college education. Theirs is the obsession with disparities in income rather than a concern with job opportunities. Socialism holds a strong appeal for many because it legitimizes coveting your neighbor's possessions, which was once commonly understood as against the Tenth Commandment. And the premises of socialism, all under the high-minded guise of fairness, are anything but fair. Capitalism, on the other hand, is responsible for the enormous levels of philanthropic giving that we see in the United States of America, the most generous nation ever known to mankind. We must continue to speak out boldly, not based on fear, but based on facts. We must continue to tell the truth, regardless of its popularity. We must continue to implement policies that unleash the power of our free economy and create more opportunities for all Americans, like the recently passed Tax Cuts and Jobs Act with its bipartisan opportunity zones. It's my firm belief that in the marketplace of ideas, freedom will always win out over socialism on the basis of merit, evidence, and facts. But it cannot win if no one is making the case. Mr. Speaker, let's continue to stand up and speak out. Let's make the case for freedom and opportunity for all Americans.